Good evening. Welcome to everyone here in the room today and to those of you joining us online. To this press conference on the launch of the Coalition of Trade Ministers on Climate. The coalition is being co-led by trade ministers from Ecuador, the European Union, Kenya and New Zealand. It aims to provide a high-level political direction and guidance to bolster inclusive international cooperation on climate, trade and sustainable development. It will also promote trade policies that pursue climate action. It will increase cooperation and engagement of ministers working on climate, environment, finance and development, providing a global response to climate change, including by engaging nationally and internationally. Finally, it will engage with relevant stakeholders from different regions, different levels of development and climate vulnerabilities. Over 50 ministers have joined this coalition. My name is Kimberly Botright and I head sustainable trade at the World Economic Forum. I'm delighted to be joined here today representing the coalition by Valdis Dombroskis, Executive Vice President for an Economy that Works for the People and European Trade Commissioner. We also have Julio José Prado, Minister of Production, Foreign Trade, Investment and Fisheries of Ecuador. Now, unfortunately, Moses Correa, Kenya's Cabinet Secretary for Trade, Investments and Industry, cannot be here with us. But we have Damien O'Connor, Minister of Trade and Export Growth of New Zealand, who will join in particularly for the Q&A section. We are absolutely thrilled to also have Rachel Kite with us. Rachel is, a dean, is the Dean of the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. Now the coalition held its first meeting here today in Davos and then immediately ran a public-private dialogue with 40 plus stakeholders from international organizations, academia, business and NGOs. The Executive, Executive Secretary of UNFCCC, the Executive Director of the International Trade Center and the World Trade Organization WTO Director General were also present. That dialogue focused on what the coalition's priorities could be and how trade ministers can best support climate action initiatives. Now, without further ado, let me turn over to the countries themselves to share more on the coalition. EVP Dombroskis. Can you tell us why you're launching this coalition today and what does the coalition aim to achieve? Uh, good afternoon, um, uh, everyone. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm uh, proud that we are launching this uh, coalition of trade ministers uh, on climate. Uh, it reflects our shared belief that trade and trade policy can and must do more to tackle global climate crisis. Uh, it reflects our strong uh, conviction that collect, uh, collective action is the only way to produce meaningful results. So this coalition uh, aims to be uh, inclusive, high-level political dialogue. Uh, we want this coalition to strengthen uh, global uh, collaboration on trade, climate and environmental uh, sustainability. So we are starting with uh, a relatively small but fully committed group of uh, countries and uh, based on considerable interest so far, we are confident that others will join uh, as we develop our plans and showcase the potential of these uh, coalitions. Uh, our members are already very diverse in terms of geography and uh, development. We have uh, different uh, experiences and perspectives. And uh, this is uh, very important for me and my uh, fellow colleagues, uh, because uh, uh, we uh, believe that this diversity will ensure that different interests and needs are taken into account and reflected in our uh, work. Uh, so we have been uh, carefully developing this uh, initiative to be uh, thoughtful and inclusive. So we had the first dedicated meeting uh, with interested ministers uh, on the margins of the WTO ministerial meeting last uh, year. Uh, we have received a valuable input uh, from uh, this diverse group of uh, ministers, which were both from developing and developed uh, uh, countries. So uh, this coalition will help us identify new opportunities uh, for cooperation and by coordinating our activities as closely as uh, possible, we can really start to pull in the same uh, direction. Uh, the ongoing process of the w, uh, WTO reform must also integrate the climate dimension. Uh, indeed, a clear climate agen uh, agenda should be an important part of uh, reinvigorating the organization. 
Uh, we successfully launched the work on the WTO reform at the 12th uh, ministerial conference last uh, uh, June, so we must ensure that climate is uh, part of it. Uh, uh, for example, we should enhance uh, our dialogue on how trade-related climate policies or other measures such as subsidies could be designed in a manner that achieves climate goals. Uh, this uh, coalition should also uh, uh, work to identify technologies and investments required to achieving Paris Agreement climate mitigation and adaptation strategies. Uh, it should examine how trade can help to spread those technologies and facilitate the necessary investments around the globe, uh, uh, including in the most vulnerable economies. So, uh, uh, innovative uh, technologies that uh, help both the climate mitigations and examples here can be solar panels, wind turbines, green hydrogen, which are critical for green energy transition, but also uh, technologies that can help countries uh, uh, to adapt to changing climate conditions. Uh, here we can think of uh, uh, high efficiency irrigation systems, drought resistant seeds, or early warning uh, systems. Uh, if we want a truly global response to climate change, we need to work together. We need to engage uh, nationally and internationally with uh, fellow ministers working on climate, environment, finance and development, among others. So uh, uh, we need to be, uh, uh, do a, a better job in terms of joining those different uh, dots. So this also will require en engagement with a variety of interlocutors. Uh, as it was already said, today we uh, uh, met with businesses, NGOs and academia uh, leading climate action initiatives and we explore how we can work uh, together and we plan to host uh, uh, many more uh, exchanges of this kind. So today it's an important first step and I look forward to welcoming other countries on board as we pursue our goals and uh, hope this will help us to gain a real critical mass and change trade policy for the better. Thank you. Thank you, EVP. Now, one of the things you mentioned was the wide range of countries that are participating in this coalition, and that's something that's really important. So, Minister Prado, let me turn to you for more on this point. Why do you think it's so important for a developing country like Ecuador to be part of the coalition? Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity of being here in this coalition and these press conferences as well. Uh, so uh, let's start with the background, a little bit of background on, on, on Ecuador uh, and uh, representing that developing country and a country in Latin America. I think uh, Ecuador in most countries in Latin America and South America specifically are, are amongst the most biodiverse in the world. Uh, but also our uh, economy this depends on exports, both exports from agricultural products and fishery uh, products in aquaculture, uh, like shrimps, uh, like uh, fishing from, from tuna and other types of, of um, uh, basic products that we export to the world. But uh, in order to be competitors in the future, we need to do it uh, in a sustainable way. So for our economies, there's no trade-off between uh, trade and and conservation, it's just a matter of survival in the near future. So that's something that is really important for our economy. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think Ecuador has been a champion for at least uh, the last uh, two years uh, in terms of putting together two words that seem uh, irreconcilable, um, industry, trade, and conservation. Uh, we have managed to finish uh, an, an amplification, an increase of the marine reserve around Galapagos that increases the area, the protected area in which no one can fish up to 60% more than we used to have. This has been a discussion in Ecuador for the last two decades and we managed to get along between the fishing industry and the conservation sector in Ecuador and I think this is one we can bring also to this coalition of trade ministers uh, that are working together towards conservation and to fight climate change. So this this view of a small country, a small country can play uh, a big role in the, in the international play field. So we are delighted to be working uh, with the European Union, with Kenya and with New Zealand on a shared vision on forging an inclusive and high level dialogue on trade and climate and its contribution to sustainable development. As we build cooperation on trade and trade policies that supports ambitious climate actions. Inclusiveness, leadership and trust at the highest level will be vital 
to an to a important transition to a new economy. To tackle pressing environmental challenges, it is not only et it's not only ethical, but it's the right thing to do. It is also economically sound and economically important. As trade ministers, we need to deliver both economic results and sustainable results. Climate change, along with pollution and biodiversity loss, require coordinated actions of all of our countries to save the planet and the future generations. All the countries here today, more than 50 countries represented in this coalition, are small, vulnerable economies, also big economies, some of the biggest in the world, and also small islands. So everyone needs to be included in this discussion. As we said today, this discussion is way overdue. Uh, we, have, we should have done this uh, years ago, but this is the time for action and the time to start this sort of coalitions. So our work must be inclusive, in cooperation with different agencies along the world, and it engages in a wide and diverse group of trade leaders ready to participate in the nexus of trade, climate, and sustainable development. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Minister. One of the things you alluded to there at the end is the part of the coalition that agrees and looks to cooperate with other ministries, including ministers of finance. And I think that's so critical for some of the priorities that you mentioned. I bring that up because we have Rachel here with us today. And Rachel, I can think of no one better to comment on how we um, enable and, and have finance ministers and trade ministers work together to achieve the climate action agenda. Please, Rachel. Well, thank you very much. Um, so this is, uh, you know, often at, at Davos, there's, there's lots of hype around different things. And uh, I think it's fair to say that this is a very important moment because it is decades overdue, really, that trade ministers come together around this agenda. Um, and in that, in that period, sort of going back all the way to 1992, at the very beginning of the sort of climate convention, in those, there were people talking about the importance of the trade world for more sustainable development, but it was just politically beyond our means to be able to organize the trade world and the climate world to sort of come together. And now I think this initiative is uh, long overdue, but very, very important and very timely. Why? Because I think there is an, an understanding now and an appreciation that the only way in which we combat climate change is by systemic change in the way in which we run our economies. And so finance ministers have, in particular over the last seven years, increasingly become intrinsically involved in how to think about climate action. We're talking about subsidies. We're talking about um, the, the kinds of uh, uh, seismic uh, announcements that we've seen in the last calendar year from the United States with the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, with uh, the, obviously the European Union's evolution of CBAMs and approaches. And the rest of the world looking on saying, how does the financial and the trade system operate when we've only got one planet, where everybody needs to be in, where we need more trade, better trade, greener trade, where we need a shift in the way finance flows, what finance values. So it's, it's almost impossible to imagine how we can protect Ecuador's biodiversity, how we can protect um, the ocean riches of the European Union, how we can uh, invest in the um, new technologies, the new energy technologies, which will be developed in one part of the world but need to be deployed rapidly in another part of the world. It's impossible to imagine how we will do that in the next seven years to get to our 2030 targets and then over the next 20 years to get to our 2050 targets unless trade and finance are working together. It is trade and investment that gets us to the scale of action that we see in climate negotiations. So to have the trade ministers working together collaboratively and then we would hope conversations between trade and investment ministers, maybe under the auspices of the G20 to begin with, you're really bringing those agendas together in a positive, solution-oriented way. So how do we create the guardrails for a new technology to be able to be deployed into emerging markets or globally quickly? These are the kinds of solution-oriented conversations that we can't manage without trade ministers embracing the agenda. So a really important day for climate action today. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Some great points there. Okay, let's open it up to questions from the room. Uh, for those of you with questions, please raise your hand so I can see you. I think a microphone will be coming to you 
Uh, we'll, we will probably take a couple of questions, and please do state your name and organisation. Thanks. It's Hans van Leeuwen from the Australian Financial Review. I just want to pick up on uh, Professor Kite's point. Um, recently, we've seen with the IRA and the CBAMs something that looks like climate policy and trade policy potentially heading for collision in the sense that the EU talked about possibly taking the US to the WTO over the IRA and other countries talking about taking the EU to the WTO over the CBAM. So will this coalition be able to, and how will this coalition be able to avoid that collision? Thank you. Are there other questions in the room? If not, let me also add a question of my own since we are here at the World Economic Forum annual meeting, which is a public-private dialogue. I think we're very interested to uh, know how the coalition plans, uh, whether you plan to continue engaging in stakeholders and how. So here's a couple questions for you. Minister O'Connor, you have not had the chance to intervene yet, so I'm going to throw the ball in your direction, please. Um, look, thank you very much. And it's, a, it's an honour to be part of, of this initiative. Um, uh, we have long focused on climate change, and there have been many initiatives. We have been working on WTO and trade initiatives. This is the first time we have brought them together in a formal coalition in a recognition of trade being part of the solution, mm -hmm. uh, not just the problem, which has often been the perception uh, of trade. We've included, um, as happens at the World Economic Forum here, uh, academia, uh, wider society, um, business as well. And, and we will be reaching out uh, to all those areas in our own countries and, and with all members of this coalition to ensure that we're not charging off just as a bunch of politicians, that actually we're going to bring business sector academia to give us the advice and wider society understanding what we're trying to do here. So um, this is really important that it is inclusive, as my colleagues have said, uh, that we don't leave anyone out of the value of trade and the value of including the obligations around climate change in that trade. Thank you very much. Let's work backwards down the panel. Minister Prado, any of those questions you'd like to take on? Yes, uh, I, I think it's very important to, to keep uh, regular meetings and institutionalize the, the dialogue with uh, the business sector, the academic sector, and ONGs uh, from all over the world. So this is something uh, to tackle the climate change. It's not something that we can do alone, as of course, as, as trade ministers, but we can uh, uh, tackle it in different, in different ways. So for example, uh, after launching this coalition, uh, we met right away a couple of minutes ago uh, with representatives from the business sector, and they gave us a great comment on what they are expecting from us in the near future and what they don't expect us to do because those things are really important moving, moving forward. So if we manage to institutionalize this dialogue and take it into specific actions, I think that is what everyone is expecting from us uh, in, the, in the near future. Uh, so I, will, I would stay with that. EVP Dombrovskis, there were a couple questions there. I wonder if you'd like to take them on. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, thank you for those uh, uh, questions. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, we are now in intensive uh, discussions with our U.S. Uh, uh, counterparts uh, concerning the Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, while we uh, welcome, ob obviously, the uh, environmental and climate objectives of the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, there are also concerns which we have on discriminatory elements in this uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So we are now in intensive uh, discussions with our uh, U.S. Um, uh, uh, counterparts. Uh, uh, also, just a couple of days, uh, I had uh, the discussions with U.S. Trade Representative Katrin uh, uh, Tai on those uh, issues in uh, Brussels. Actually, she was also today for uh, the launch of our climate uh, 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 climate coalition. Uh, so currently, we are seeking on negotiated result uh, we'll take a stock uh, then when where we are and then think what our next uh, steps uh, uh, should be so we see uh, progress on some issues for example on clean vehicles uh, uh, tax credits there are some openings indicated from us in still some uh, others for example on uh, uh, raw materials so um, but obviously this will require uh, further uh, work so um, and uh, to give uh, a concrete example, what is in a sense our uh, concern? It's uh, uh, 
not uh, the fact that U.S. is providing uh, subsidies for greening the economy, but those, uh, those subsidies are discriminatory in uh, nature. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in EU, also many EU member states provide subsidies for buying electrical vehicles as we seek to promote electromobility. Uh, but those subsidies are non-discriminatory. So you can buy uh, Tesla made in USA and uh, still get the subsidy. And that's not the case with the Inflation Reduction Act, where there are domestic content, domestic assembly uh, uh, requirements, uh, uh, which is um, uh, uh, causing, obviously, the problems. So we think that we would be uh, stronger if we were building the uh, uh, transatlantic uh, alliance for uh, greening the economy if we were building transatlantic value chains and not disrupting them. So we uh, had, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, dealt successfully with uh, several long-standing disputes between EU and uh, US in uh, just now uh, last uh, year or a bit uh, more. Uh, uh, we have uh, positive dynamics in our engagement, including through uh, Trade and Technology Council, and we see how we can further our uh, engagement. Obviously, we are uh, strategic uh, uh, allies as regards uh, also now uh, Russia's invasion in Ukraine and our cooperation to both uh, uh, counter uh, and put pressure on aggressor Russia to stop its aggression and on uh, supporting uh, Ukraine. So we should seeking also ways uh, how we can cooperate on climate. Then on uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism, when we were uh, designing it, we were designing uh, it uh, exactly in WTO uh, compatible way, uh, meaning in a non-discriminatory way. Uh, because that's a key word for WTO uh, compatibility. So now we have our European Green Deal, meaning we are uh, committed for uh, climate neutrality by 2050. Uh, it means that we cannot continue to give free emission allocations to our energy intensive industries. So we need to start putting price on carbon on those industries. But if we start putting a uh, price of carbon, we need to see what is a way to avoid carbon leakage. So, so far we were avoiding carbon leakage, just not putting price of carbon on those industries. Uh, uh, as we move to carbon neutrality, that's not a viable option. So we are putting price of carbon, and then we are putting the same price of carbon uh, on imported goods. Whatever uh, we put on our domestic producers, we put on imported goods. And if a third country is having also its uh, price of carbon, it can be offset from our uh, CBAM. So really the nature of the measure is uh, uh, environmentally, and we uh, take into account also what other countries are doing. And we are taking into account concrete carbon content of uh, specific producers, so that there is incentive also to reduce um, uh, carbon uh, uh, footprint. And obviously, we are open uh, to discuss all those issues, uh, both bilaterally, or also in a context of the uh, broader uh, uh, climate coalition, uh, because uh, clearly we will need to see uh, what are the common approaches, how we can appro uh, 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 green our economies, uh, and. Uh, how the trade uh, policy can contribute to this. Thank you, EVP. Rachel, I want to make sure we hear from you, so let me frame a question um, that speaks to you as a stakeholder rather than a government. Mm -hmm. One of the themes here in Davos clearly is the fragmented, challenging context in which we live. So how do you think the coalition should navigate that context? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, well, it's a good question. Um, I was just thinking, as you asked your question, you know, the focus is on you know, will the EU and the US sort of resolve this, you know, without pistols at dawn, right? And, and I think that's the wrong focus. There's clearly a dialogue going on, an important dialogue. But what you hear here at WEF is a global business community and a global civil society community represented somehow, some way, pointing to the pathway forward for exponential growth in renewable energy, for, de you know, to an end to deforestation, De you know, deforesting the supply chains, I mean, a number of critical issues um, for which it is impossible to imagine how we are going to manage our way through this without a trading system that is purposeful uh, and a trading system where the trade community is engaging as a positive uh, actor. So, for example, I've sat in meetings uh, this week around the minerals and um, sort of the mining and minerals 
aspect of the global revol revolution in renewable energy, you know, has the potential to be a binding constraint on the shape of the growth that we need. Uh, it will require um, uh, the trade regime to allow for those minerals to move to uh, you know, where they're going to be used in production uh, smoothly. Now, you know, a natural reaction is to stockpile, especially in a world where we have geopolitical tensions. We know from food security and for, you know, from grain that stockpiling is the absolutely worst thing to do in order to get development outcomes. But you know, it's important to have the trade ministers sitting at the table with finance ministers, with climate ministers and everything to make sure that we, you know, we don't make the mistakes that we've made in the past as we move forward. So what you hear at WEF is a sort of global, you know, a global consensus that we really have to um, sort of move through the gears and, and, and get to speed and scale in climate action, and that it's impossible to get the trade and investment that allows that to happen without the trade regime at the table. So I think there's, you know, I've, been, I've been quite struck by how global the conversation has been here and how united actually different sectors of the business community have been in sort of like, we need finance ministers, we need trade ministers, we, you know, this is a whole of government thing and we need it now. So I, I think another reason to, to wish this coalition the very best. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, we've got two minutes left, um, so I'd like to thank you panellists for answering those questions and just uh, hit you with one last quickfire question. If you had one word to describe the impact you hope this coalition will have going forward, what would that one word be? Again, I'm going to put you on the spot, Minister O'Connor, because you're next to me and we'll move down uh, the panel. E effective. Effective. Please, EVP. Inclusive. <laughs> Practical. Sorry, I have three. Turn, <laughs> turn conversation into action. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. Well, we got more. Uh, we got an extra words there, which is fantastic and shows the enthusiasm. With that, I'd like to thank my panelists again and close this panel. Good evening.